Hey Lions, it's so good to see you again. Um, I figured out how to remove that white box that was apparently covering my face in the last video. Sorry about that. I'm learning new technology right along with you. All right, we're gonna pick up where we left off yesterday. Um, we had collected some more evidence that perseverance is a theme in this text. And it was when we read page 114. I just wanted to share with you um, how I paraphrase what had happened in that section of the text. Um, I wrote here that Via told Augie that he has never been one to quit before. And I really felt like that supported the fact that perseverance is a, a theme because when you persevere through something, you don't give up even when it's difficult. So I went ahead and um, I have this sticky note and I'm going to add it just right here on the same page with all the other pieces of evidence um, that we had gathered so far, the perseverance is a theme. And I wanna quickly go back to our constructed response we started yesterday, because this is something a good reader and writer does. When they finish writing, yesterday we just wanted to get our thoughts down. We um, looked at the guiding question, we broke it into two parts and we've answered the first part using our notes over here from our reading journal. Now what we're gonna do is reread it because yesterday we were just using the evidence, turning it into complete sentences, but now we wanna reread it and make sure it makes sense and make sure that we're not repeating the same thing over and over again, especially because we were re referring to Augie in just about every sentence because it was all about Augie persevering in the novel. Okay, so let's just re go back and reread this. Perseverance has emerged as a theme in wonder. August, or Augie for short, has had 27 different surgeries from the time he was born. The doctors even said that Augie wouldn't live through the night when he was born. Hmm, I see this sentence ends with he was born, and so does this sentence when he was born. So a good writer doesn't say the same thing over and over again in the same sentence. So I wanna take a look at that and see how I can reword it in the second sentence. So the doctors even said that Augie wouldn't live through the night. Hmm, maybe, so I'm gonna get rid of when he was born because we had just said when he was born. Um, so we'll say the doctors even said that Augie wouldn't live through, let's say his first night. Okay, so we're saying the same thing, but we're just using a different way to describe it so we don't repeat our words. So let's reread those two sentences and see if um, we've eliminated that repetition. August, or Augie for short, has had 27 different surgeries from the time he was born. The doctors even said that Augie went and lived through his first night. Perfect. Okay, so we've got those two ideas without repeating. Okay, let's keep reading. This brave 10-year-old boy was born with extreme facial differences that caused many medical problems. Due to the medical difficulties, August was homeschooled by his mother. I'm thinking I've got many medical problems, medical difficulties. So I'm, I'm repeating that word medical. So what if I just say, in this sentence right here, what if I just say, due to, the diff to these difficulties, let's see if that sounds okay. Due to these difficulties, Augie was homeschooled by his mother. Okay, so we've eliminated that word medical. And so now let's reread those two sentences. This brave 10-year-old boy was, was born with extreme facial differences that caused many medical problems. Due to these difficulties, Augie was homeschooled by his mother. Okay, however, he has decided that he will attend school for the first time, even though it terrifies him. This is a little thing, but we've got he, he in the same sentence. How about we say, however, he has decided, how about we just say to attend school? Let's see how that sounds. 
However, he's decided to attend school for the first time, even though it terrifies him. Awesome. So we've eliminated the word he. It was in the same sentence twice. So we eliminated it once. Awesome. <clears throat> when Augie toured his new school, a boy named Julian was being rude. Despite this, Augie looked him right in the eyes. You know, this sentence, I'm thinking someone who hasn't read the novel might be a little confused. Despite this, Augie looked him right in the eyes. Um, rem I remember that one thing that kept coming up in the novel was that Augie was looking down and he never made eye contact. So I think we need to qualify or say why this was so important. Otherwise, you know, someone who hasn't read this story is going to be like, so what if you looked him in the eyes? That was like a big deal for Augie. So let's, let's add that in there. Despite this, Augie looked him right in the eyes and we'll say, hey, let's just say what I said out loud. This was a big deal for Augie. This was a big deal for Augie because he avoided eye contact at all costs. Okay. <clears throat> Augie faced each day at schools at school with kids staring at him because of his appearance. But he continued. I think we need to. We want to bring it back to the fact he persevered. So he faced each day at school with kids staring at him because of his appearance, but he continued to go each day. So usually before the word but, which com combines a sentence, um, it's a conjunction, you put a comma. Okay. So these were just a few examples of perseverance being evident as a theme from the first section of the novel alone. Okay, <clears throat> let's give it one more read through. That's what a good writer does. They read through. We made some good changes, but let's just read it through one more time and make sure we feel like, um, like we've answered about the theme. Remember, we'll go back tomorrow and we'll start addressing the author's purpose. We're still on the first part of this question. We want to make sure we answered the question, that we've answered what the theme is, and we want to make sure we have text evidence, and we want to make sure we have not repeated the same thing over and over again, because we had a little bit of that on our first draft. Perseverance has emerged as a theme in wonder. August, or Augie for short, has had 27 different surgeries from the time he was born. The doctors even said that Augie wouldn't live through his first night. This brave 10-year-old boy was born with extreme facial differences that caused many medical problems. Due to these difficulties, Augie was homeschooled by his mother. However, he's decided to, to attend school for the first time, even though it terrifies him. When Augie toured his new school, a boy named Julian was being rude. Despite this, Augie looked him right in the eyes. Go, Augie. This was a big deal for Augie because he avoided eye contact at all costs. Augie faced each day at school with kids staring at him because of his appearance, but he continued to go each day. These were just a few examples of perseverance being evident as a theme from the first section of the novel alone. We have Augie, 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 three in a row. So, so let's say this was a big deal for him because he avoided eye contact at all costs. All right. So I think, I think we've got, um, I think we're good to go with answering what theme is evident. We've got our lots of tax evidence. We've got the topic sentence. We've got the concluding sentence, many different examples from the text. And we cleaned it up as a writer. We made sure we didn't have repetition in there. Okay, so let's get um, back to our novel, Reading Aloud. Um, and I should not have the white bar across, across my face today. So, all right, here we go. Part three, remember, this part, this part is um, entitled Summer.
So I'm really excited to see if we're, now we're going to hear from her point of view. I suspect we are based on the setup of the first two sections. Okay, the chapter is called Weird Kids. Some kids have actually come out and asked me why I hang out with the freak so much. Hmm. These are kids that don't even know him well. If they knew him, they wouldn't call him that because he's a nice kid. I always answer and don't call him that. You're a saint, Summer, Hamina Chen said to me the other day. I couldn't do what you're doing. It's not a big deal. I answered her truthfully. Did Mr. Tushman ask you to be friends with him? Charlotte Cody asked. No, I'm friends with him because I want to be friends with him. Charlotte, or I answered. Who knew that my sitting with August Pullman at lunch would be such a big deal? <clears throat> People act like it was the strangest thing in the world. It's weird how weird these kids can be. I sat with him that first day because I felt sorry for him. That's all. Here he was, the strange looking kid in a brand new school. No one was talking to him. Everyone was staring at him. All the girls at my table were whispering about him. He wasn't the only new kid at Beecher Prep, but he was the only one kid everyone was talking about. Julian had named him the zombie kid, and that's what everyone was calling him. Did you see the zombie kid yet? Stuff like that gets around fast, and August knew it. It's hard enough being the new kid, even when you have a normal face. Imagine having his face. So I just went over and sat with him. Not biggie. I wish people would just stop trying to turn it into something major. He's just a kid. The weirdest looking kid I've ever seen, yes, but just a kid. The plague is the next chapter. I do admit, August's face takes some getting used to. I've been sitting with him for two weeks now. Let's just say he's not the neatest eater in the world. I don't really feel sorry for him anymore. That might have been what made me sit down with him the first time. But it's not why I keep sitting down with him. I keep sitting down with him because he's fun. See that, guys? We could be missing out on um, some great friendships and meeting some new people if we judge people on their appearance. I'm so glad Summer has learned this. Learned this. <laughs> One of the things I'm not loving about this year is how a lot of the kids are acting like they're too grown up to play things anymore. All they want to do is hang out and talk at recess. And all they talk about now is who likes who and who's cute and who isn't cute. August doesn't bother about stuff like that. He likes to play four squares at recess, which I love to play too. It was actually because I was playing four square with August that I found out about the play. Apparently, this is a game that's been going on since the beginning of the year. Anyone who accidentally touches August has only 30 seconds to wash their hands or find hand sanitizer before they catch the plague. I'm not sure what happens to you if you actually catch the plague, because nobody's touched August yet, not directly. Wow. Do you remember earlier in the story, when it was from Augie's point of view, that um, the student in the science class had accidentally touched his hand and he went running to the sink to wash his hands? Now we know why. So this is really cool because the author is using first person narrative from lots of different characters' viewpoints. Now we're learning things we wouldn't have known before. So, so now we know why um, he had run to the sink. Still, um, that really was hurtful for Augie. Um, interesting. Okay, let's keep reading. How I found out, found out about this is that Maya Markowitz told me that the reason she won't play Foursquare with us at recess is that she doesn't want to catch the plague. I was like, what's the plague? And she told me. I told Maya I thought that she was actually dumb or that that was actually dumb. And she agreed. But she still wouldn't touch a ball that August had touched. Not if she could help it. The Halloween party. <clears throat> I was really excited because I got an invitation to Savannah's Halloween party. Savannah is probably the most popular girl in the school. All the boys like her. All the girls want to be friends with her. She was the first girl in the grade to actually have a boyfriend. It was some kid who goes to MS-281. There she dumped him and started dating Henry Joplin, which makes sense because the two of them 
totally look like teenagers already. Anyway, even though I'm not in the popular group, I somehow got invited, which is very cool. When I told Savannah I got her invitation and would be going to her party, she was really nice to me. Though she made sure to tell me that she didn't invite a lot of people, so I shouldn't go around bragging to anyone that I, that I had gotten invited. Maya didn't get invited, for instance. Savannah also made sure to tell me not to wear a costume. It's good she told me because, of course, I would have worn a costume to a Halloween party. Not the unicorn costume I made for the Halloween parade, but the goth girl setup that I'd worn to school. But even that was a no-no for Savannah's party. The only negative thing about my going to Savannah's party was that now I wouldn't be able to go to the parade and the unicorn costume would be wasted. That was kind of a bummer, but okay. Anyway, the first thing that happened when I got to her party was Savannah greeted me at the door and asked, where's your boyfriend, Summer? I didn't even know what she was talking about. <clears throat> I guess he doesn't have to wear a mask at Halloween, right? She added. Hmm. And then I knew she was talking about August. He's not my boyfriend, I said. I know, I'm just kidding. She kissed my cheek. All the girls in her group kiss each other's cheeks now whatever they, whenever they said hello. And she threw my jacket on a coat rack in the hallway. Then she took me by the hand down the stairs to the basement, which is where the party was. I didn't see her parents anywhere. There were about 15 kids there, all of them popular kids from either Savannah's group or Julian's group. I guess they've all kind of merged into one big super group of popular kids now that some of them have started dating each other. I didn't even know there were so many couples. I mean, I knew about Savannah and Henry, but Hamina and Miles and Ellie and Amos? At least, let's see. Anyway, about five minutes after I got there, Henry and Savannah were standing next to me, literally hovering over me. So we want to know why you hang out with the zombie kids so much, said Henry. He's not a zombie, I laughed, like they were making a joke. I was smiling, but I didn't feel like smiling. You know, Summer, said Savannah, you would be a lot more popular if you didn't hang out with him so much. I'm going to be completely honest, honest with you. Julian likes you. He wants to ask you out. He does? Do you think he's cute? Uh, yeah, I guess. So you have to choose who you want to hang out with, Savannah said. She was talking to me like a big sister would talk to a little sister. Let me tell you guys, if someone tries to make you choose between friends, then they really don't have your best interest at heart. Um, a true friend wouldn't put you in that position. So just keep that in mind. She was talking to me like a big sister would talk to her little sister. Everyone likes you, Summer. Everyone thinks you're really nice and that you're really, really pretty. You could do totally be part of your group, our group, if you wanted to. And believe me, there are a lot of girls in our grade who would love that. I know. I nodded. Thank you. You're welcome, she answered. You want me to tell Julian to come and talk to you? I looked over to where she was pointing and could see Julian looking over at us. Um, I actually need to go to the bathroom. Where is that? I went to where she pointed, sat down on the side of the bathtub, and called Mom and asked her to pick me up. Is everything okay, said Mom? Yeah, I just don't want to stay, I said. Mom didn't ask me any more questions and said she'd be there in 10 minutes. Don't ring the doorbell, I told her. Just call me when you're outside. I hung out in the bathroom until Mom called. Then I snuck upstairs without anyone seeing me, got my jacket, and went outside. It was only 930 the Halloween parade was in full swing down Amesford Avenue. Huge crowds everywhere. Everyone was in costume. Skeletons, pirates, princesses, vampires, superheroes, but not one unicorn. Wow, I have to say I am really proud of Summer. Um, remember Mr. Brown said his precept was to choose kindness? She's doing that right now. She is choosing to be kind and, um, you know, putting people's, treating people's hearts carefully and being a good friend and standing up for what's right. I'm really proud of her. I hope we, um, you know, we have lots of, of summers in our school as well. All right, Lions, um, I've got to sign off for now, but I can't wait to get back to you tomorrow. I hope you have a great day, Lions.